So one of the subjects that come up in coaching recently is the whole idea of courage. And I was talking to a client who was feeling like they weren't blessed with a big dose of courage. And that was because they often found themselves, you know, scared and worried and concerned. And, you know, the kind of stuff we're talking about where, you know, there's a meeting and there's a dozen people in the meeting and you've got an opinion, but it's kind of scary to mention it because, you know, that's it's going to be courageous to kind of speak up and say, um, I disagree, I, you know, I want to go in a different direction. It takes courage. And so this girl was talking to me about she felt like she didn't have the courage because she most often doesn't speak up. And I said, okay, well, that's a protective device. All it is is you're taking care of yourself and you're making sure that you don't get crucified in a situation where you don't know that your opinion is actually going to be valued or your opinion is that, you know, it could all go kind of funny. So look on the bright side and say to yourself, all right, so... That ensures my survival, that takes care of me, but it's not really a good long-term proposition because I really need to offer my opinion. It's important for me that I speak up for myself and that I have the courage of my convictions, so to speak. And so really we've got to find a way for you to be able to offer your opinion in those meetings or in those family situations or whatever, and that's going to take some courage. And of course, she said, well, I'm just not blessed with it. Other people seem to have it. And I guess that's one of the things we do with courage is we look at it and we go, there's all these people being brave. You know, you look at football players going out there and smashing into each other. I don't think I've got the courage for that. Well, certainly I haven't got the will for it. I haven't got the body for it either, so I don't have to worry too much. But, you know, we look at that as if courage is a gift that is bestowed to some people and not to others. And I would beg to differ. What I would say is courage is a skill that you can bring forward, but you probably need to work with it. If it's a skill, then it's not going to materialise out of nowhere. So my client who stays silent in the meetings is not going to get any better by staying silent because the skill of being courageous is not being practised. Now, maybe those meetings is not the place to start. In fact, the first thing that I wanted to get across to her is that courage by itself, it's not just a skill you can learn, but if you look at it by itself, it's not the absence of fear. In other words, you can be doing something and shaking like a leaf while you're doing it. You can be terrified and still be getting on with it. So what happens for most people when fear shows up is that we get scared and the message of scared or the message of fear is stay here, don't go anywhere, don't do anything, you'll be safe back here with me. And so the message of fear in you know, public speaking is don't go up there and speak in public. Um, they'll humiliate you. Stay back here with me where it's safe and sound. And fear whispers in your ear that doing nothing is a seriously good technique. I'm here to suggest you doing nothing is a seriously bad technique because it means you never get to practice the thing that you need to do. So that's the first thing. Understanding courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is doing the thing that is right, that is moral, that is good, despite the fear. So fear can be present as we're doing the thing that other people are going to call courageous. Of course, we're going to call it courageous as well because the impetus is to do nothing. The impetus is to stay back, to hold back and make sure we don't get massacred in the survi- you know, and we don't survive. Because whether that's a battle with swords and shields or whether that's being speaking in public massacre is pretty much the same thing. And that is, I'm terrified I'm not going to survive in my current state at least. So when we look at um, displays of courage, we mostly see the external display of it. The person who speaks up in a crowd, the person who goes into battle physically or, or any other kind of battle, we see this external display of courage. We tend to think that courage is mostly external. But I want to talk to you about internal courage. Internal courage is when you say, well, there's a lot of scary things out there in the world, but you know what the truth is? None of them are as scary as my internal world because I've let myself buy a bunch of stories about how I'm scared to do this and I don't want to do that and this one bothers me, that kind of thing. So I believe that the best application of courage is with yourself. That what we need to do is we need to turn inside and look within and find the things that I'm afraid are true about me and have the courage to go within to explore those things with the purpose of depowering them. It is true that we can unravel the things that worry us about ourselves most of all by turning towards them. Just by being with them, we weaken their grip on us. So it's important that we understand this turn within concept because that's where the greatest victories are. If you look at what turns human beings on, if you really look like what floats their boats, so to speak, what you'll see is that it's courage used in this way that excites people most of all. 
So typically speaking, we can use bungee jumping as an example. 20% of bungee jumpers are adrenaline junkies who are there to do it again. They did it yesterday, did it three times today. To keep, because the adrenaline wears off so quickly, um, they jump with their best friend, they jump naked, they jump upside down, they jump, bungee jump that is, um, holding a sack of beans. There's a whole bunch of you know ways of making it different because if they don't make it different, it's the same old thing. Put, let's put them aside for a second because 80% of the people who bungee jump are probably tourists who are visiting a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to go bungee jumping. In other words, it's not done in their local town or whatever. So here it is, we do it or we don't. And of course, you know, there are some people who are saying, oh, I will never do that and don't even consider doing that. But for the people who think maybe I will, then when those people go bungee jumping, the adrenaline does not wear off in the same way as it does with the adrenaline junkies. Because with the adrenaline junkies, it's gone quickly. With these people who face a major life challenge when they go bungee jumping, then what happens is we notice three months later, later their eyes are still bugged out. They're still excited. When we bring up the subject of they did it, they might show us a photo, that kind of stuff. And guess what I did? And they'll, they'll talk about it. And the reason that they're so excited is they did the thing that they thought they could do and that's really the killer with human beings is that what's going to excite you more than a new house a new car a new boat a new partner a new whatever which is what our culture tells us we need what's going to excite you more than that is facing the stuff that you think you can't face dealing with it and overcoming it is it difficult yes is it dangerous no should you do it yes do you want to do it no is it really important? Yes, we really should look at the things that would be healthy for us to do, probably because we don't want to do them. In other words, maybe the best reason for doing the thing that you don't want to do is the fact that you don't want to do it. Because when you do it, you gain self-respect. What happens as a consequence of self-respect is self-esteem is elevated and that affects every single thing in your life. So why don't you make a list of things that you don't want to do and ask yourself which one of those things should you address and hop into it and provide yourself with some of the victories that you're going to treasure most in your entire life.